each person that we're interviewing. Uh, mostly just remember that you're in public, this is a public forum, yeah. we're being recorded. Please mind your language. Um, then we'll interview Kara at 310, Emma at 320, Monica at 330, and Ann Karp at 340. We'll review the finalists, we'll get final thoughts, and then we will select locations for each of the boxes. We have an idea per the neighborhoods where they would like them to go. We think they kind of fit in those areas, but we'll take a final vote on them after we have interviewed. And then we'll wrap up close to four and move into our regular scheduled meeting. Does anyone have any questions before we begin? And just a note, for whatever reason, I can't pull up multiple screens or I haven't figured out how to do that on my computer. I've tried multiple different things, so please use the raise your hand option so I don't miss you. So just as a quick aside, um, Courtney and I are gonna take turns interviewing. Um, I will email Kara or email, I will interview Kara and then Courtney and then me and then Courtney and you all have the questions are pretty basic and as most of you know, we abridged the questions, all of kind of the, can you actually show up questions, all the artists are good with everything to go as far as um, participating and they're all excited. So um, this is really a get to know the artist and their thoughts behind the pieces. So, and their proposals. Um, we had 18 um, proposals and of that we were able to select four with the neighborhood. So everybody was really excited about the ones that you're gonna be seeing or the ones you've actually seen too that Kirsten emailed out. <clears throat> Yeah, I think everybody on this call right now. Oh, Dennis, you are raising your hand. Thank you so much. Whenever you're ready, you can unmute and chat away. Mr. Lippert, you're muted. <laughs> well, you're still muted. Um, I'm going to check in with Marty really fast. We are live on YouTube right now, but um, she is working on putting us live on the city website. Let me check with her and then we should be good to go. Am I visible to anyone? No, nope. you are not, but it's not a requirement. I don't think it's a requirement to be visible. It might be, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, Raise your hand. What's up, Dennis? I was just on another meeting with this uh, tablet and it was completely visible on both ends. You Sometimes you have to restart your computer. In your lower left hand corner, um, there is of the screen, Dennis, there's two buttons. One says mute and one says stop video or start video. You can make yourself visible on those if you can see them. Okay, I put start my video. There, oh, there you go. Look at oh, that okay. living color. Oh. Yeah, I just I just uh, touched touched the screen there, and and there it is. All right, and we are good to go with Marty. Um, Kara is in the waiting room, so I oh. can let her in whenever <clears throat> you guys are ready. Are we all ready? I'm ready. If everyone else is, if anybody has any issues, <clears throat> speak now. Okay, I think we're ready to move on to Kara. Awesome. Here she comes. Ooh. Isn't that a fun little doorbell noise? Yeah. <clears throat> <coughs> Connecting to audio. Okay, so we're gonna call to order. Um, Kara, are you here? Kara's on mute. We, Kara, can you? On mute. Lower, there you go. 
Oh, and you're sideways. Well, there you are. I was going to say, and you're sideways. <laughs> So I was just going oh, to wait for you to come on. I'm just going to call the meeting to order um, very quickly and allow for any public comment if anyone has anything that they would like to say. Nope. All right, we'll just move right on. Kirsten, would you please um, give Kara a quick, quick rundown of the rules during um, our live streaming interview? Yeah, totally. So um, just make sure you leave your microphone on mute um, unless you're speaking. It helps with the sound quality. Um, I think that's about it, right? <laughs> and then since we are on Zoom, it's going to be a little different. We'll go through and we'll do our introductions um, very quickly for each person. Hi, Kara. I'm Courtney. I'm the chair of the Public Art Committee. Kathy Olson, vice chair of the Public Art, Art Committee, chair of the Traffic Signal Box Committee. And then just, um, we'll go down the list. So Kirsten. Um, yeah, I think all of our lists might be in a different order. Okay, I'll call um, people out. Then. Uh, um, Kirsten, please introduce. Kirsten Paisley, I am staff of the Public Art Committee. Joe. Hi, I'm Joe Kellogg. I'm staff on the Public Art, nope. I'm just on the <laughs> Public Art Committee. Kirsten's the staff. And I'm also on the board of directors of the LGBT Community Center here in town. Holly? Did I get that right? So All you right. can just unmute yourself. Yep. I'm Holly, um, potential new member of the art committee. Dennis? Hi, I'm Dennis Lippert. I'm an architect and an artist and a member of the public art committee and as well as the traffic signal box committee. Heidi. Hi, I'm Heidi. I'm the uh, city council liaison to the public art committee. <clears throat> Jen. Oh. <laughs> Jean. Hi, I'm Jean Kiley. I'm on leadership team for uh, Riverfront Neighborhood. Casey? Sorry, uh, I'm Casey Erickson. I'm representing the leadership team for Rose Park. And Danielle. Hi, um, I'm Danielle Vasquez. Um, you can call me Danny. I am also a member of the um, Public Art Committee. Um, Awesome, so we will move right into the interview. So Kara, it's Kathy, I, I get to ask you the questions and um, there'll be some general things like we discussed and then we'll open it for some questions from the Public Art Committee and then any questions you have. So um, pretty streamlined. Um, what, first of all, we'd like you to describe your background as an artist and talk a bit about your past, um, past commissions and how they've been received. Okay, hello, thank you for the question. And it was nice to meet all of you. Uh, my background in art is I went to the University of Montana and got my fine arts degree in painting and drawing and a minor in art history. And about two and a half, three years ago, I started working at Opportunity Resources as an art assistant and I've been doing pottery and painting with adults who have disabilities. And after about a year of that, I found that I kind of wanted my own art practice again. Uh, and I volunteered with the Humane Society uh, to paint some portraits of pets that were adopted at their facility and kind of kicked off from there, I started painting dogs and cats pretty much every day. I think my commission total right now is about 400. In the past two years, I've painted a lot of animals and uh, my commission uh, kind of need is, it's just, it's growing a lot. I've been doing bigger projects. I did a, a bench project for them recently. I've done large scale acrylic paintings. Uh, typically I do watercolor and ink for my portraits but I uh, am excited that people are supportive of all the mediums that I choose to use and that I get to have a fun art practice so it, it seems like every day I'm doing something. 
That's great. So I'm going to hold up your box and everyone has images on their computer. We sent them images of the box, but could you briefly describe your thoughts and ideas about how you conceive the piece? So, Sure, my idea behind it was that I just wanted to capture as many different types of dog breeds as I could. I love animals of all types, but the interest I had for this was trying to portray the larger animals with the smaller ones and create a cohesive piece where they're all just pals together. Uh, I don't know, in my mind, Missoula is such a tight com community and I feel like the box kind of shows that with all the dogs close together. And then on the top, I decided to feature my two dogs. <laughs> So that's Maple awesome. and Dolina, <laughs> but I, uh, I wanted it to be vibrant too. I chose the background colors to be a bit more loud. Usually when I'm doing commissions, they're a bit muted down, but I just love the, the traffic signal boxes that pop in town. And I was trying my best to create something that would catch the eye with color and composition. Great. Um, so do you do we have any comments? I told you, Kara, this was going to be a quick one. Um, do we have any comments from anyone else on the committee about Kara's box? You're right. Everyone's quiet. <laughs> um, Kara, do you have any questions for us? Um, just a quick overview. Um, Jim Nugent's office is working on contracts. Um, checks are ready, but we'll be notifying you when you can actually go in tomorrow and sign everything. So you'll be getting either an email or a call from Kirsten or myself or Courtney. So, um, and boxers are scheduled to be underway this weekend, everybody, starting on Friday. So did you... Um, did you find a company, um, settle on a company to do the vinyl? I did. I decided to go with Fast Signs. Perfect. I, yeah, I called a couple different places, but it was oddly perfect. A friend of mine who just moved here reached out and said he saw that I called, and he works for the company as well. And oh. I just feel like it'd be great, great business to support a friend and a local, local business. Yeah. And we'll be taking photos throughout the process. So when you do get going, we'll just coordinate all of that. Do you have any questions for us? Uh, I guess I'm wondering, are you guys sure of locations yet for where the, they'll be featured? And I think that's my only question, really. Um, we are going to decide after the interview to finalize the location. So we'll let you know. They're all good ones though. Yeah, okay, great. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time to talk with me and thanks for asking those questions. Perfect. That sounds good. Uh, that's all we have. So okay. thank you so much for making the time for us. All right. Thanks. To hearing from you. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> Perfect. Awesome. Um, and we have Emma Coville waiting whenever you guys are ready. I think we're ready to just bump right in if that's okay. Um, yeah. It'll go a little faster because we've already done the call to order. Uh, just when she comes in, can you give her the quick rule and then we can just bump right into introductions and I'll just go the exact same list that I did for the first uh, interview. Awesome. Hi, Emma. How are you? Good. How are you? We're doing good. Um, so really quick, just for um, sound quality, whenever you're not speaking, just make sure you have your mic on mute and that'll help with echoes and everything. Um, and we're going to do really quick introductions. My name is Kirsten Paisley and I am staff for the Public Art Committee. Hi, Emma. I'm Courtney. I'm the chair of the Public Art Committee. Kathy? Uh -huh. 
Kathy Olson, Vice Chair of the Public Art Committee and Chair of the Signal Box Committee. Joe? Hi, I'm Joe Kellogg. I'm on the Public Art Committee and on the Board of Directors at the LGBT Community Center. Hallie? Hi, I'm Hallie Kern. I'm a potential new Public Art Committee member. Dennis? I'm Dennis Lippert. I'm an architect and an artist, and I'm a member of the Public Art Committee, as well as the uh, Traffic Signal Box Committee. Heidi? Hi, I'm Heidi West. I'm the City Council Liaison to the um, Public Art Committee. Jean? Hi, I'm Jean Kiley, Leadership Team for Riverfront Neighborhood. Casey? Hi, I'm Casey Erickson. I'm on the Leadership Team for the Rose Park Neighborhood. Danny? Hi, I'm Danny. Um, I'm on the Public Art Committee. Carl? Um, Carol, you mean? Oh, Carol. <laughs> Carol. Yeah. Um, I'm Carol Gordon. I'm on the leadership team for the Rose Park Neighborhood Council. Awesome. So, Emma, I am going to be doing your interview today. Um, I just have some quick questions that I'm hoping will go super smooth and everything will be great. Um, so, the first question I have for you is please describe your background as an artist, talk a bit about your past missions and how they have been perceived. So I have studied art at the university and got my degree in fine art, but before that I have been doing art as long as I can remember. Um, past commissions I've done, I've done an entire backdrop for a um, theater production. And I have also done public murals in my high school um, for teachers um, that just wanted to spruce up their rooms. And I have also painted murals in um, like people's rooms before. Um, and I think they were received all pretty well. <laughs> Can you briefly describe your thoughts and ideas about how you conceived your piece? And I believe Kathy has it and if she wouldn't mind lifting it up to show. Um, yeah, so I um, started doing a lot of drawing from observation when I was in art school and I just found that when I was sketching, I could just remember so much more about what was happening when I was drawing and um, would draw on trips rather than take photos so that I could like remember the trip better. Um, and so like on all my walks through Missoula, I like to um, draw cute houses that I see and um, cute flowers and I um, just like try to remember that feeling of going on walks as much as I can like in each neighborhood and I've lived in like eight different houses in Missoula and so like each neighborhood is like very like brings specific memories up from each house I've lived in um, and this box specifically um, was inspired and a product of lockdown because I um, an ex I'm an extreme extrovert and not seeing people is like really hard for me. So going on walks was the only really thing that I did that like made me happy when I was feeling down um, other than art. And so I like looked to little patches of flowers and like seeing flowers grow in the spring um, and cute lights people had hanging up outside their houses and the sunsets. And um, I told my friends I measured the success of all of my walks by how many cats I got to see. <laughs> and so that is the um, in inspiration behind this box. Awesome. Um, are there any comments by the selection committee that anyone would like to add? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I was just kind of wondering, uh, I know it hasn't been uh, painted yet, but if May, what uh, she would think about um, maybe something more going on with the sky, maybe some, I don't know, uh, 
stars or uh, outline of a cloud or something or a, or a comet shooting across or I don't know, just just a, just a suggestion to have something maybe more going on with the sky, maybe. I don't know. Emma, just what are your that. thoughts on that? So um, adding some kind of element to the sky. Yeah, yeah I love that idea. I think um, thought. I thought about adding clouds and um, I'm definitely willing to do that. And I really like adding stars to um, other works that I've done in this style too, so. Definitely. You know, Emma, you do have little, I, Dennis, I just noticed when I picked up the actual box versus looking at the photos because I didn't zoom in, you do have little star dots. So that might be an easy addition as well. Just one of the reasons um, we do have artists look at the top of their boxes because we have people in 18 wheelers and in buses and they can all see the tops. It's like a hidden secret when they ride through Missoula. And I, it doesn't show very well on camera, but the top does have stars on it a little bit. Uh, no, I thought that no. one. No, no stars. No stars. So um, this evening dusk sky. Evening dusk sky. That might be a good spot, Emma, uh, for you to add a comet or some type of cloud thing to be on top. Because we do ask that the artists paint the top of their boxes as well with something on there. Would that be something you could do? Yeah. That sounds awesome. Cool. We'll work with you on that. Um, does anyone have anything else to add to that conversation? Awesome. Um, Emma, do you have any questions for us? Um, I don't think I specified the base color um, that I was going to use. I was thinking black, but depending on which box it is, is it mm -hmm. okay to like either leave the concrete or black or like change the color based on the location? We have some artists paint the base. We have some artists not paint the base. So I think that's completely up to you on if you wanted to or not. The base is kind of a bonus feature. Um, speaking of Stop that kind of leading into it. Um, checks are ready, but we will let you know tomorrow, um, either through phone call from myself, Kathy or Kirsten, when you can go sign to pick up your check um, and that they are supposed to be started this Friday for completion um, next week, next Monday. Okay, yeah, and then I guess that's my other question. So the deadline is next Monday to have it be done? September 2nd, correct, Kathy? No, it's next Wednesday. Because oh, we review Sorry. them, yeah, we review them on Thursday just to make sure that your box oh. looks, looks like your piece. So yeah. um, I was off on my dates. My apology. Um, and also, you do need to stain the base. You can't leave it unstained or unpainted. But as far as your color, yeah, and Macon has those. And I'll talk. I can Dennis and I can talk to you about those. Um, cause they will have to order them in from Helena, but it only takes a day for some of the colors. A basic black, I think they have in stock. And so some artists actually, what Courtney was talking about is some artists actually carry their, have carried their design down into the base. So. Emma, was that clear or, um, do you have oh. any further questions regarding that? Um, and then Anne, one of our artists, the, the clear coat that is specified in the art call, Anne Karp, who's one of our artists, has volunteered to buy that. And then because it's like $50 a gallon and then she splits, she'll split it up in jars for the artists because you don't need a whole gallon. Um, and then you'll pay her like 12 bucks or something like that for that. Great. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll coordinate all of that also. <laughs> Awesome. So Emma, if you don't have any further questions, um, we'll conclude our interview. And thank you so much for being here. We love your box and we're really excited. Yeah, thank you so much. I hope and you all expect to see us out there taking photos and things. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Thanks. All right, thank you so much, Emma. Bye. All right, awesome. Um, and we have Monica ready, so I will let her in. <clears throat> Perfect. Then we'll follow the same routine, Kirsten. But I think you already know that, so we're good to go.
Hi, Monica. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, so we're going to do a really quick introduction of everybody before that. Um, just if you would, uh, make sure you're on mute um, at all times, except for when you're speaking. It just um, helps with audio quality for everybody. Um, so we'll do a really quick introduction. Um, again, I'm Kirsten Paisley, and I am staff for the Public Art Committee. Thanks for being here. Courtney, chair of the Public Art Committee. Kathy? Kathy Olson, vice chair of the Public Art Committee and chair of the TSB project. Joe. Hi, I'm Joe Kellogg. I'm on the Public Art Committee and Board of Directors of the LGBT Community Center. Holly? Hi, I'm Holly Kern. I'm a potential new member of the Public Art Committee. Dennis. Dennis, we'll come right back to you. Um, mm -hmm. Heidi? Hi, I'm Heidi West. I'm the City Council Liaison to the Public Art Committee. Jean? I'm Jean Kiley, a leadership team for Riverfront Neighborhood. Dennis? I'm Dennis Lippert, Public Art Committee and TB, TSB Committee. <laughs> Casey? Hi, I'm Casey Erickson. I'm on the Rose Park Leadership Team. Danny? Hi, I'm um, Danny Vasquez. I'm also on the Public Art Committee. Carol? Hi, Carol Gordon. I'm on the leadership team for the Rose Park Neighborhood Council. All right, we'll leave it to Kathy to start the interview. Hello, Ms. Monica, thanks so much. Um, our first question is, we'd like you to describe your background as an artist and also just talk a bit about your past commissions and how they've been received. There we go. Let me unmute. Um, so in general, I started um, teaching myself how to paint probably last year. Um, so I'm pretty fresh to being like an artist that is actually a working artist. Um, I just graduated grad school. I had some extra time on my hands um, and I had um, some family issues. And so I just needed something to actually do with my hands. Um, and so I'd always kind of dabbled in art and taken, you know, classes here and there um, and really just kind of threw myself into it um, last summer. So um, with my commissions, I just started um, posting online on various platforms of just things I was working on for myself um, initially. And then people started um, saying, hey, is this for sale? <laughs> and I started saying, yeah, actually, I think it is. <laughs> and so it just kind of took off from there um, with um, different people approaching me and a lot of the art I was just making for myself. And if other people happened to like it, that was great. Um, and that was in the beginning. Um, recently, um, I have started doing like solely commissions, especially since um, Corona has hit and there aren't that many, you know, public art showings and things of that nature anymore. Um, where people will contact me. Um, I'll kind of get a general idea for what they're looking for and what style um, they've seen me do that they like. Um, if they have anybody in particular, um, usually the people contacting me are indigenous people. And so they would like um, their family members honored in some sort of artistic way. Um, and so they've been sending me um, pictures of family members um, and you know, just general keepsakes. And I've been incorporating that into um, collage portrait work um, with resin. Um, and so far, I'm pretty proud to say that everything that I've done for um, people, whether it was very specific with a picture or just a general idea of, hey, I want to do something that's Ogallala Lakota, um, has been received very well. So I think I've got a lot of happy people out there. <laughs> That's great. So I'm going to hold up your piece. And while I'm in front of my computer camera, so while I'm doing so, we're hoping that you could describe your thoughts and ideas about how you conceived the piece. Okay, so um, my art in general, that's Mary Sophie. Um, 
And sometimes you'll see her listed as Natli um, Supi because she is Salish. She's from the Flathead Reservation. Um, and um, they didn't initially have R's in the language. Um, so I'll just start with the first person, the girl in blue. Um, initially, I kind of started dabbling in this style of art because I felt like, um, especially in Missoula, um, first of all, I'll just tell you this, my family is Salish, so I'm biased, um, <laughs> but <laughs> Missoula is traditional Salish homeland, um, and I found that looking around Missoula, unless you were looking for that information, you couldn't regular, like, you couldn't find it, right, unless it was something that you were seeking out. And so I thought that there was a lack of acknowledgement from the dominant society um, in terms of who was here before people started settling from the West. Um, so I wanted to do something that gave, I guess, respect to that and honor to that. Um, and I also wanted to make sure um, that I was um, conducting a piece that was a reflection of indigenous people that was done by an indigenous person, because you can find people um, that are painting people that are native, but a lot of times these people are outside the culture. Um, and so it, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, so that's what I started with, with Mary Sophie. Um, I just like her general look. Um, she's an ancestor. I think that picture is from 1905, maybe 1908. Um, and so I started with her. This picture on the side is important. Um, the one that you're holding up right now. And that is a family photo that's taken in Missoula. Um, you can see the M in the background of the picture, um, especially if I highlight it better. <laughs> um, but that really kind of ties the Salish here, as in this is a place where they were living. Um, I don't know what family that is that is in there, um, but there's lots of oral history that I get um, from um, my family where they're talking about like we have um, ancestors that are born underneath the Higgins Street Bridge before the Higgins Street Bridge was built. Um, and so that's that's a historical photo and I wanted to make sure that I incorporated that because it connects people to Missoula. Um, this right here and it has the same historical photo in the background. Um, that is Caroline Vandenberg. That is I think a great great grandma um, and she is Bitterroot Salish. Um, that photo is a family photo that I just wanted to incorporate um, in here being a little bit more modern. <laughs> and then this one again on the opposite side. Yes, um, same photo. And I think that that photo is important because I think that people need to see that like, this is an actual place these were actual people that lived here. Um, and like, you can see the background of the place where people have now moved in. So Miss Monica, one of the things we talked about that I talked to you about in the committee was hoping that you could do, you, the top of your box is blank. just black. And we had talked about being able to carry some of that background imagery or adding something to the top. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I can. Let me see if I have, um, I printed off something that I was thinking of putting on the top. Let me see if I have it with me right now. You. Monica, we need you to put your video on as well. Oh, okay. Because we're oh, not seeing you. On. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there we go. Can you guys? Oh, no, it kicked me out. Can you guys see me? Yes, now we can. Okay, sorry. I thought this was on the whole time. Um, so I do have this picture, and it is a picture of just a teepee um, set against a background. Um, the other thing that I could do, because I didn't know what traffic box I was going to be assigned, um, but I want to make it so that if, if you are on, let's say, a corner, you can see it coming and going. Um, that's pretty important to me. And so I could also reverse the image depending on if the box is on a corner where you have traffic going this way and then traffic going the other way. And it actually aligns up pretty well, but I am almost positive that I do not have that 
um, with me right now. <laughs> And that's your image? That's an image you have? my image. Um, it's actually taken from a powwow. I don't think it's a powwow in Missoula. I think it's a powwow in Arleigh. That's, well, <laughs> that's fine. But it's mine. <laughs> you, and you've not used that image before in any artwork? or I have not. Um, yeah, I'm not. And it's also like this is cropped. Um, and if it was reversed where it's a mere image of each other, I've never used that before. I just oh. have it. I like post it every now and then because it's my favorite picture. <laughs> cool. Um, any comments from the selection committee? I have a question. Um, the grandma Vanderberg in your art, um, what was the name again? Caroline Lee Vanderberg. Caroline, okay. Cool, just because um, I have one of my um, really close friends, her grandma is a Vanderberg and like, hey, your grandma might be on a traffic signal box. <laughs> so just letting you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so Monica, we, family, but we're probably related. <laughs> so Monica, we have the um, contracts are being finalized, checks are prepared. So we'll call you either Courtney, Kirsten or myself will call you tomorrow, but when you can go in and sign. Okay. Um, and pick up your check. Um, we will be making the decision as to which boxes will be where after we finish the interviews. Okay. We'll let you know. Um, I'll give you a call tonight. And okay. um, do you have any questions for us? Um, I think so. Let me see if I wrote them there. I guess um, I know that things are a little wonky because of, you know, pandemic. Um, <laughs> oh, understatement. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but I was wondering what the timeline expectations were for when it should be completed. Exactly as the art call and as we talked to you about, it needs to be finished by next Wednesday the 2nd. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. And then did you guys have any suggestions? I know people have done vinyl before. Um, did you guys have any, any suggestions for where to go for that, if you were allowed to say that? Um, we can talk about that, like any of the vinyl shops in Missoula can do that. Some um, have done it more often than others, but any of them can do it. Okay, okay. I think those were my, I think those were my only questions. I suppose I would understand the dimensions once you guys had finalized the box. Yes. Okay, okay. That was my other one, but yeah. So I think that's it. <laughs> cool. Well, great. We sure appreciate your submitting. We love the box. The selection committee loved your box idea, your proposal. So um, we'll give you a call tonight about your box and just talk about some other things. Okay, sounds great. Thanks so much. Thank you. And Anne, you are in the room, so. Hi, yeah, I'm mislabeled, but this is Anne. Oh, you snuck in, because I was like, I don't see an Anne. <laughs> awesome. I'm using my husband's laptop, so, yeah. No worries, hi, Anne. Um, uh, you might already know this, but just whenever you're not speaking, go ahead and be on mute just for sound quality for everybody. Um, and we'll do just a really quick introduction so you know who you're talking to. Uh, my name is Kirsten Paisley, and I am staff for the Public Art Committee. Nice to have you here. Hi, Anne. I'm Courtney. I'm the chair of the Public Art Committee. Kathy? So I don't know where Kathy is. We'll go come back to her. Joe? Hi, I'm Joe Kellogg. I'm on the Public Art Committee and Board of Directors of the LGBT Community Center. Kathy? Sorry, I muted myself, as Kirsten said. Kathy Olson, Chair, Vice Chair of the Public Art Committee, Chair of the Signal Box Committee. Hallie? Hi, I'm Hallie Kern. I'm a potential new Public Art Committee member. Dennis? Dennis Lippert. Public Art Committee and Traffic Signal Box Committee. 
Heidi. I am Heidi West. I'm the city council liaison to the public art committee. Jean. I'm Jean Kiley, leadership team for Riverfront Neighborhood. Casey. Hi, I'm Casey Erickson. I'm on the leadership team for the Rose Park neighborhood. Danny. Hi, I'm Danny um, Vasquez. I'm on the public art committee. Carol. Hi, I'm Carol Gordon, leadership team for the Rose Park neighborhood. All right, awesome. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to dive right into these questions. And um, can you please describe your background as an artist? Talk a bit about your past commissions and how they have been perceived. Uh, well, I have always done art, but I've done it as my career for the last five years. Um, I, uh, I am a sign painter and a lettering artist as well as a muralist. Um, and so I really enjoy working in public. I really enjoy the interplay of, um, you know, having people watch while I work, which I know a lot of artists actually really hate, but I, I enjoy it. I feed, I get energy off it. Um, and let's talk, let's see some of my past commissions. I did a traffic signal box uh, in 2017 and it was fun to, I had to get used to getting honked at. I had to realize that it wasn't, you know, just traffic pileups, but um, but that there were, you know, people supporting. And so that was really fun. Um, I've gotten positive comments on that one. Um, and then I've done a lot of murals like in restaurants and um, those like uh, five on black has me do a mural in like every new restaurant they open up, which is really fun. Um, and so I really actually enjoy the collaboration with the, with the clients or the owners or whoever I'm working with. Um, to make sure it's something that they're really going to love and, and treasure. And I've also learned a lot about just materials. And so I actually really appreciate um, the art committee being so specific about exactly what we're supposed to use because it takes all the research out of it for me. I just know this is what I use. This is, this is it. So um, I could talk about other mural commissions I've had, but or does this, is this enough to answer your question? Okay. That's pretty good. Thank you. Um, can you briefly describe your thoughts and ideas on how you conceived your piece? And Kathy will hold that up for people to view if they uh, haven't seen it already. So um, my piece is uh, uh, respect to um, pollinators and, and pollinating plants. So I've picked several um, native species, both of plants and of bees, three native bees. Um, and incorporated them into the box. Um, I think that my inspiration for the design was actually from another um, artist, Leah Grunsky, who makes these little nesting boxes for bees. And I bought one and I put it up in my yard. I mean, I'm not a good gardener, so it fell over and everything fell out of it. <laughs> Maybe this one will last longer. Um, so, uh, but the concept of just these habitats for bees and prioritizing these pollinators that give us life and um, and keep the ecosystem and help to keep the ecosystem in balance. That really is important to me. Um, so I wanted to paint and plus, I mean, they're honestly just very beautiful. So I wanted to paint something that would respect the these species and encourage people to think about them and maybe create habitats of their own since a lot of these locations are in neighborhoods. I thought it would be a neat place to encourage that. So. Um, and I also wanted, when I was picking the color palette, I wanted it to be really warm, kind of honey-like, um, something that, you know, when it's winter, Missoula can look so bleak and, you know, neutral. And so I wanted it to just have a lot of color and look really, um, you know, warm, no matter what the season was. Awesome. So you were um, called and told you were a finalist for the Public Art Committee, Chapa Signal Boxes. And you were spoken to about possibly modifying your piece a little bit um, to put the honeycomb on the other side. How, what are your thoughts about that? Um, is this an issue for you? Um, it's not an issue for me. I could do that. I assume that I wouldn't need to put any on the top, which is just fairly simple, just a couple of clouds and one branch and a bee. Um, mm -hmm. So I see the, the side with the blanket flower is the side without, like in the mock-up, the side without any um, honeycombs on it. And so I believe I could add that without it getting too complicated or dense as long as I maybe, you know, took away um, 
there's like in the lower left of that side, there's a not quite blooming flower. And I might take that away so that it doesn't look jumbled. Uh, so I might simplify a little bit of the greenery and take out one bud um, if that is okay with the committee. But other than that, I think I'll just incorporate like not a lot, but maybe the same number as they're on the, um, the side with the echinacea, the purple flowers. So yeah. there's not a lot there, but there's some, so you still get the sense of that and you get the continuity. So does that modification sound like it would work for people? Um, it sounds good to me. Is there any, does anyone have any thoughts regarding that modification uh, from her side, which is just flowers with two bees to having honeycomb on it with bees? I would still have flowers just to clarify, but yeah. Um, yeah. We'll add the honeycomb. Yeah. All right. Um, are there any comments from the selection committee? Moving on. Uh, do you have any questions for us? Um, I do have some questions. Um, so I was looking at the locations and one was, it said Stevens and Bancroft and I tried to Google map that and I couldn't find that intersection. Am I it's not? So oh, Stevens and Bancroft. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Okay. All right, cool. Um, and we haven't set, uh, just a year where we haven't set locations yet. We're going to do that after we end this call. We're going to um, discuss it and vote, and then we'll call you with that location as well. Um, the checks are ready, and we'll call you or email you, uh, myself, Kirsten, or Kathy, to let you know when they're ready tomorrow to go pick up um, for signing and getting all of that. And then the timeline is that you would start on Friday and be done by next Wednesday, so September 2nd. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, that sounds good. So, so I shouldn't go today for the checks. I should wait for a call and then go tomorrow, right? No, the mayor, uh, not the mayor's, the um, city attorney's office is still finishing the contracts. And so they should be done tomorrow and we'll let you know uh, via phone call or email when they are ready, but they will be ready before Friday for pickup. So you will have the check before you even start working. Okay, great. Um, and then so this may be moot since there's a 25, like there's a 75% chance that this isn't my box, but the one on Orange Street, um, I live right near there. And I noticed that on the back, there's like a lot of hedge there. Like there's a lot of hedge and I'm not sure about getting around it to paint or also if the hedge just grows back, like how important is it to do the whole thing on that? I just wasn't sure about the hedge situation. It's not something you have to like talk to me about unless that's my box, but I just wanted to point that out. And cause I was kind of wondering how that would work like physically. I mean, I've done a lot of murals and signs in really weird spots. I'm kind of used to contorting, but I just wondered if there was anything that would be different about that box. Um, you know, I think that's gonna be a discussion for us once we get off this call and talking about that. I'm not sure if I have the answer for you right now, um, but we could, if you were selected for that box, that would be something we would definitely talk to you about. Okay, cool, yeah. No need to follow up with me unless that, that turns out to be the case, of course. Um, let's see, oh, um, and tell me if I should talk to Kathy about this, just like separately on a phone call, but I did pick up a, um, uh, material uh the diamond the sealant for the like the base of the box i picked up a whole gallon and traditionally the artists have split the gallon and so i wasn't sure when i sh when or where that handoff would occur like we're going to coordinate that too but we've i've already mentioned it to artists so oh okay cool yeah and i i realized when you were speaking with the last artist with monica that she's doing a vinyl so she won't need any i don't think or does yeah, she she'll just, still have to okay. seal her base. Okay, well, I have it all. So whenever, you know, I could drop it off when I pick up the check or whatever too. So um, just let me know when that would be good to have happen. Um, yeah, I think that'll be something you and Kathy can coordinate. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I don't need to take everybody's time with that then. Um, I think that's all the questions I had. Um, yeah, and Kathy, if you could just let me know when I should pick up my box model again, that would be great. But that's all the questions I have for the committee. Yeah, I have everybody. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Anne. We really appreciate you coming. Um, we will end our interview. We appreciate you doing the box, and we are looking forward to seeing it.
Okay, thank you all so much. Thank Thanks, you, Anne. Anne. Thanks, Anne. Bye bye. So, so now we're going to, I'll shift to Casey and Kathy to discuss location. So Casey, can you talk through some of our the thoughts um, on locations and you had talked to the some of the neighborhoods and sent um, ideas out. Um, traditionally, everyone, we've been um, more prone, well, we really try to work with the neighborhoods, each of the neighborhoods to make sure that they find something that they like in their neighborhood and they want in their neighborhood as much as which boxes may warrant more of a pedestrian oriented location um, versus a vehicular location, along with something that fits within that area yet doesn't um, advertise a business, for example. So Case, I'm gonna let you take it away on this one. Sure, so thanks, Kathy. The, I can really only speak to Rose Park and a little bit for Riverfront and, and Jean will hopefully add to it that um, it seems that we're happy with the selections for the Stevens and Beckwith and the Orange and Sixth, Fifth, I get them confused, Sixth or Fifth. Um, Can you let everybody know what? Um, so so just to let everyone know too, um, one of the things the Stevens and Beckwith would have um, been Ann Carp's piece, Pollinators. And at Orange and Sixth would be the Zoo City Lights by Emma Colville. Um, a couple of the other thoughts and are you were um, Monica's piece um, entitled Homelands. We were thinking of Madison and East Broadway, which we did have um, previously a piece that was done by an indigenous woman. It was a and then this um, highway department had to change that box out. And that is why that one is um, being, well, we'll have a new image for it. And then the other one was Russell and Wyoming and that was Kara's piece, the dog days in summer. So, Those were just preliminary thoughts. And I'm a big fan of putting Monica's piece on Broadway and Madison. I don't know how, if anybody has any thoughts on that, that's the one that I think should definitely go there. And raise your hand, take yourself off mute if you have anything to voice. I, I also like that idea of having Monica's right there um one um just because i live really close to that one and i could go and look at it and just admire it <laughs> i haven't talked to historically anyone. because of the history of that area we thought that might be a great location and a great tribute piece for that area as well um i think the the rationale for Emma's piece on Sixth and Orange is both that and the Russell and Wyoming. There, you know, all of these places get a lot of foot traffic, but Emma's is so detailed, and that was the one with the the cats and all of that. We just thought that that might warrant um, a closer up pedestrian situation. We thought Kara's piece, because of the dogs and their visibility and their size, even though you'd walk up and see the detail of what she's done, they would also carry real well at a distance. Um, Carol, how are you think, what do you think of that? And Jean also had something that she wanted to oh, add. Jean, so, I'm sorry. Jean, if you would like to add after Carol, that would be great. Sorry, so we'll her to unmute. Uh, yeah, I agree with everything you've said so far. I am uh, delighted the bees uh, are going to go at the Rose Park area. I think the most appropriate place uh, for the Native American is uh, downtown because 
that's the area that's depicted. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I think the locations are, they're properly placed. I like it all. And it's great art. Thank you. Thanks everyone for all your work on this. This is the first time I've ever been involved at all and I'm totally impressed and appreciative. Thanks. And I agree with everything. Those locations are great. They would have been the ones that I chose. So thanks you guys for doing that. Um, so we will vote on the locations. Um, we will, I'll just call off the names like I did for introductions and we'll just do yay or nay for um, voting um, on those locations. Kathy, if you're okay with that, I will start with Kathy. Kathy, yay or nay for the proposed, well, the proposed locations are Monica at Broadway and, sorry, I have to pull it up, Broadway and Madison, Anne, which is the honeycomb, honeybees at Orange and Sixth. Um, sorry, no, sorry. No. It, sorry, Anne is at um, Beckwith and Stevens, not Orange and Sixth. Oh, Beckwith and Stevens, my apology. She was, don't worry, guys. Um, orange and six is Emma. That's where I was thinking. Orange and six is Emma with the um, walking downtown. And then that leaves Russell and Wyoming for Kara's, which is the dogs. So uh, please vote yay or nay on those locations. And Kathy, we will start with you. Or we'll go to Joe and we'll come back to Kathy. Yay. Okay. Um, Hallie, you can Sorry. vote on this one because we are, um, this is a public voting selection committee. So if you would like to vote, you can. I'm voting yes. Okay. Heidi? Can you unmute? We'll come back to Heidi yeah, and we'll go to <laughs> Yes. Yay. Okay. Kathy? Yes. Jean? Yes. Casey? Yay. Danny? Uh, yes. Carol? Yay. Dennis? Yes. And Stoney, I don't, you, how long have you been in the meeting for? Just a little bit or? I am staying. Thank you. You're staying? Okay. So it looks like our Locations have passed. Is it unanimous Wonderful. then? Did you vote? Unanimous that everybody voted yes on the locations that we proposed. Perfect. Um, and I vote yes on the, obviously I vote yes. So we'll call the artists tonight and um, let them know and also give them kind of the rundown and remind them of everything again. And they will start this Friday, everybody. Um, the, the two artists, so we'll have two artists that are painting and two in vinyl. Um, the vinyl folks will let us know when they're done. Um, we'll try to let everybody know so that you can go out and see the vinyl being applied if you want. Sometimes the vinyl companies say one thing and then they show up at a different time. Um, but it is really interesting to watch them because they're, they're working with roughly four feet by often 10 to 12 feet of vinyl. And it's, it's pretty cool seeing the process. So, but um, you'll, we'll try and keep you apprised of the process. And Carol and Jean, if you can um, make sure Casey has your email address, um, she will like pass things on to you as well. And do make sure you give those once you're off the call though, because we don't yes. necessarily want those to be public information. Um, but I think we will adjourn this meeting and get ready for our public art committee meeting. Uh, Carol, Jean, and Casey, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you'd like to log off, you're more than welcome to. And thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, all. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. All right. So we are then going to move into our public art committee meeting. Hello, Lisa um, and Stoney. We are just wrapping up that and we're moving right along. So I'm going to call this meeting to order. Um, and we don't have any guests 
but we do have a new public art committee member. And this is for Lisa and Stoney. I introduced her at the beginning of our um, traffic signal box selection committee meeting, uh, but I'd like you both to meet Haley. Not Haley, sorry. I've been calling you Hallie the whole time and then I called you Haley. It's Hallie. Um, Hallie Kern, she is going to be our new public art committee member um, per city council approval. So if you'd like to say hello, please say hello, Hallie. Hello, Hallie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nice to meet you. Can you give us a little introduction about yourself? Tell us a little bit about your background. Sure, of course. Um, I am originally from Oklahoma. I've lived here, gosh, 15 years. My husband and I, Peter, own the bicycle hangar. Um, yeah, we, um, I'm starting a nonprofit with another uh, friend, Ray Curtis, called Cancer Support Community. Um, so that's kind of been a passion project. I'm just six years out from leukemia. And um, I have a almost eight year old, very extroverted son named Hank, <clears throat> who is a tried and true Hank, if you will. And yeah, we're just, I'm excited to be a part of the art committee. I've been really diving in at Hank's school in the past couple of years and was on the board at Living Art of Montana for a few years as well. And just kind of slowly like crawling out of the mom hole and diving back into some passion projects. So I'm excited to be with you guys. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Awesome, well, we are excited to have you. If you have any questions along this meeting or if you just want to sit back and listen, you're welcome to. Just raise your hand, let us know. We're always happy to answer questions and it's a lot. So don't feel like any question is a silly question. You always ask. Kathy, um, you have your hand raised. Just wondered when the approval will be, the final approval. Did you say that? Did I miss it? Um, I did not say that, and I can't remember what Heidi's email said. Hmm. If it's, I think it's going to be in September. Yeah, oh, cool. mid-September. I think is what she said. Yeah, I was trying to remember the exact date, but I couldn't. Um, I'm going to pull up the agenda for today. So moving on to the approval of July minutes. Um, I'm sure everybody's looked them over, but if you have a moment and you need to review it, review it for about two minutes and then we'll just go on to voting for approval or amendments. Kathy, your hand is raised. Oh, it is, I should not be. There you go, I got it. I took it off for you. Thanks. Um, does anyone have any amendments that they need to make to the minutes of July? Um, I open the minutes and I do not know why. So I'm probably gonna abstain from this one. Okay, so Kathy is abstaining from this vote. Does anybody wanna put a motion for approval out? I'll move to approve the minutes. Does I'll anyone second, second that? No. Um, all those in favor, please raise your hand. And I can't see the video, so Kirsten, you're gonna have to let me know if it passes or not. Yes, it passes. Wonderful. Okay, moving right along. Um, Hallie, I introduced you new member moving right along up down to the mountain line mural. So that art call for the mountain line has gone out. So I saw that Lisa shared it on Facebook. Um, Danny, I think you shared it as well. So if you haven't gotten on the Facebook page, please share that art call or let any artist you know out there that there is this art call out there for the mountain line. They're doing the front um, entranceway to the transfer center. They wanna do a mural on there. And the art call is open until September 14th. So there's plenty of time to get something in. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with that. Not like a ton going on with it, but we'll have more next month. Thanks for all your work on that. Oh, it, it honestly, I think um, they did <clears> most <throat> of the work for us. We were just kind of there helping out, which was a super awesome project. I'm really excited about it because they want it to be a multi-different, multi-level project where they're kind of doing the whole area 
They've got new buses coming out that are going to be um, green. So it's really exciting. Lisa. Um, yes, I just wanted to say to both um, Haley and Heidi, and maybe Joe, I'm not sure if you did this. Like we had a big push earlier um, where we went into the, to help grow our Facebook page, which is um, just a couple yeah. hundred people, right? Is it still okay. a couple hundred followers, maybe four or 500 now? Um, I will pull up the Facebook page really quickly and let you guys know. Anyway, if you could go in, so they really depend on this committee to get that word out there. So if you could um, go in and do the invite friends. So you would, I mean, one of the reasons that you're on a committee is to help connect networks throughout Missoula, right? So if you could go in and do the invite friends feature, and then it would connect your network to the public art committee. Um, so, and then whenever you try to get in tune with the Facebook posts and whenever they come out, just help spread the word with that. We don't have a marketing budget or anything, or um, so we really kind of depend on our members to help spread those um, announcements. Okay, did you do that, Joe? Did you do the invite? Yes, ma'am. Like, okay. share, comment, and invite. <laughs> well, we're up to almost 800 followers. That's all. Well, we're almost at a thousand, y'all. So I think if we do another push, yeah, maybe. We and it, get at least really, every member should try to do it every once in a while because you okay, know, that's what I, a few more friends. So it's been a while to ask. Try to do that push because I don't think we've done it in a couple months. To be honest, I don't. Do you remember last time we did it, Lisa? No, it was kind of individual last time. We just yeah put a word out, but it is. It probably would be good for everyone to systematically do that again. See if you've picked up any more buddies. Thanks. Yeah. I would. That was going to be my question because I've done it a few times and then I thought if you set it, I didn't know if there was a way to set it so that it would just do it. No. It didn't manually do it. That's what I thought. Yeah. It takes about 10, 15 minutes the first time. So the, yeah. the first time is the big push, depending on how many friends you have. Mm -hmm. um, None. I mean, Facebook <laughs> friend. Um, <laughs> Joe just has two. It took him a minute. Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, after that, if you just do it every six months or so, it'll only take two or three minutes. So it's not a big deal, but it, it's really helpful to us. Um, so I'm just going to circle back. I see we have a Jacinda with us. Jacinda, are you um, a guest here um, for our meeting? Yeah, I'm a guest. I'm a friend of Danny, and I'm just interested in seeing what's up and how I might be able to help out. Awesome. Well, welcome, Jacinda. Thank you for being here. Um, just so you know that there are just a few little rules of being on the call. Just make sure your microphone is muted um, as it is. This is recorded and it is public. So please just try to watch language as you're talking and all that jazz. Um, so we'll just move right along. Traffic signal box is Kathy. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We have um, the selection committee and the interview committee has met and we are proposing um, the four boxes that have been selected and artists interviewed for a final approval. Um, I can hold them up. Um, the first one is called Zoo City Lights. Um, for those of you that um, we're not part of it. It is by Emma Colville. And um, the location suggested for this piece is on 6th and Orange Street. So um, there are a few hedges there. We will go and take care of all of that stuff for her. Um, Emma is also going to add a few stars to the top of her box to make it a little more exciting for those 18 wheelers. And um, I think she also said she might do sky, clouds or stars in her sky as well, per Dennis's suggestion. So um, our, our I think she might be adding to that too. Yeah, our next artist is Monica Giles Brings Yellow. Um, 
And this is her box. It'll be a vinyl box. And let me I have to bring up the exact title again so I don't. It is called Homelands. Um, and it, as I said, vinyls, photographs. She has all the rights to the photographs and um, able to reproduce them. Ooh, there's that. I'm going to give you a little better view. And it was great during her interview, it was really wonderful because she gave us a great narrative of all the imagery on her boxes. And she also is going to modify the top of her box because the it is going, what she submitted was plain and she's looking at a design with her marbleized background, but a silhouette of a teepee or two teepees on the box. And her location is um, the Madison and Broadway, which is very cool because we had a previous indigenous woman who did a box there that was a par flesh. So and the highway department moved that to replace the box. So that was very, it's very apropos for her also um, because of the historical significance of that whole area. Um, the next one, since it's next on my list is Kara Mall. This is Dog Days of Summer. And Kara's location is going to be at Russell in Wyoming. Um, and Kara has done, what did she say in her interview? Roughly 400 portraits of dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. Girls. And then this guy on side number four. Oops, sorry. And then this is her top. And our final artist is Ann Karp. And this is called Pollinators. And her location will be on Beckwith in Stevens. And I believe hers is Pollinator Haven. Oh, thank you, dear. I'm sorry, thank you, Kirsten. And she has agreed to put honeycomb on this side as well. Yeah, she want, she's going to add the, the um, selection committee. And we wanted her to add just a couple of honeycombs to make it a little more unified. And, and she's willing to do that. And here's her top. So again, that was Beckwith and Stevens. Um, so what we need the committee to do is approve these locations um, so that we then can get the artists started <laughs> to approve both the artists, I'm sorry, and their locations. So I, so will, one, I would make a motion that we approve the selected artists, artwork and locations for the 2020 traffic single, signal box project. Does anyone want to second that? Sorry, I just had a really quick question before you vote, which may have already been answered. But um, on Monica's picture, she said that one of the photographs was a historic photo, the one of the family that's so cool with the M in the background. Mm -hmm. um, is there any issue with like copyright? Does she have permission to use that photo? Again, I might be off base here, but I just wanted to ask the question. Um, no, not at all. We, we did um, talk to her about that and she has permission on all the photographs.